the water comes like a foot below the house. It's all water. <laughs> all water. Crazy. About to leave. Already packing. Come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. We're back with the going to the lake. <laughs> so we aren't heading out for a day at the lake like we would back in the States. You get eaten by an alligator. But we are headed to Tonle Sap and you will hear more about it throughout the video. It is a local community in a floating village. Tuckles. Yeah, we see them in the city too, them selling them. Yeah, very popular in the city. One buck like this. Okay. Like they make it for one buck. It will be cost you like one fifty or two dollars, depending on which store. Yeah. No more store about one dollar. Yeah. The good store two dollars. Here, only twenty five cents. <laughs> <laughs> so in rainy season, the water market. Can you see? Oh, about just like a one meter left from down. the floor. Yeah. And in rainy season, the petty field you see nothing. The forest you see nothing. Only top of it you can see the forest. But the petty field just full of water. Over there, full of water as well. Water hyacinth that some local people in this village they cut it and dry it to make the uh, mattress or hammock or handbag. Oh. From uh, Hayazi. Huh. So the water comes up this high. Yeah. Wow. But uh, it's a bit higher actually because when the water is very clear, we cannot see. When it dry, we cannot see the, the mark. But when the water getting brown, it marks the yeah. pillar. So it's just about this side more, like below 40, the house. Yeah, below the house, maybe. Uh, 40 centimeters. <laughs> That's crazy. It is called Tunle Sap Lake. Right. Tunle, which means freshwater lake. This lake, it is the biggest freshwater lake in Southeast Asia. Wow. 35 kilometer wide by 155 kilometer long. 155 kilometers long? About eight times bigger than Singapore. <laughs> wow. And That's a are, massive lake. There are five provinces around this lake. So what makes the water change that much? Um, this lake fill up by Mekong River during rainy season, during yeah. from uh, June until December. Yeah. It fill up by Mekong River, but from January until like May, it change its course. To this up lake will fill up the Mekong River. That's why this lake getting dry. because uh, it all went back to the yeah. river. So in rainy season, that Tunle Sap Lake can swell up three times bigger than normal size. Wow. <laughs> About uh, 10,000 square kilometers yeah. during the rainy season or 12,000 square kilometers. Mommy, look at that. It's white and then it has red. It looks like a chicken. Yeah. Uh, chicken duck. Okay. I they still feel... Mind, yeah. They feel very pleased to have tourists here because the tourists bring money to the village. Mm. You see this road here? Yeah. When tourists come or when our people come, they drop them the money for the ox. They make, they, they are making the fish paste. Oh. You know fish paste, right? Yeah. yeah. So they wash the paper, wash washing machine, right? Me? These washing machines. For washing machine for clothes? Yeah. No, no, no. no. <laughs> washing machine. They just have electricity. Literally. They just got electricity? Yeah, they just got the electricity last, like, last year. Okay. Last two years. Okay, you, you see, this, this watermark, right? Oh, my God. Oh, wow. I'm just like... Under, right under the 230. 230. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go all around here. Yeah. Okay? Yes. Go along here. Some years. Okay, so what Da was explaining earlier, he was trying to reassure me because I was not feeling very comfortable just basically coming and being a voyeur into these people's living rooms. He ensured me that this is 
the one village on the lake, I did a lot of research, and this was about an hour away from town. The lake goes all the way close to Simri. There's a few more villages there that are popular experiences to see the floating villages, but they're really corrupt, you guys. Please do your research before you go anywhere in foreign countries. Oh, I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but it's really important to support and not harm the local communities when you're traveling. The other ones, they're just tourist traps, and so there's a lot of stories about them basically not letting you leave until you voluntarily donate, like, 50 U.S worth or 40 US dollars uh, worth of rice. It's just a scam and none of that money goes back to the village is the most important thing. Here you do stop before the village and buy the tickets. Your tour guide will help arrange that. Um, you probably could pull up yourself as well but that money he was saying that you'll see the company or the guy they'll drive in and they'll disperse it like they have a system going and the people were really friendly Something and welcoming and it wasn't good. like a strange like they weren't surprised to see tourists, but they seemed more pleased than like, here we go again, or this is horrible. They are farming because they can use this smoke fish for it when they go out. When they go out fishing and farming? farming. Oh, when they got farming. Well, so they can keep it for long term, a couple of months. More than three or four months. <laughs> He's working hard. <laughs> He's working. It's good. <laughs> you know you can't do that without me. Just kidding. How is it? Like a dried fish. No seasoning. Don't make a face. They, this helps them stay alive. Give it to Da. Oh, you can. You can Everybody wants them. to know about their hair. Yeah. Can I have one for the little boy over here? Two hands. They all got one. Who didn't? Aww. And another one? Oh, look at this one. Special one. Yummy. We wish we would have thought ahead and asked uh, what we could bring or what they could use. So you might want to, if you get a local guide, ask them if there's something you could bring, like pencils, a notebook, or something along those lines. This is the local temple and primary school. This doesn't go underwater, but the rest of that entire village will be underwater during rainy season. And now we're about to head out onto the longboats to see the tour of the portion of the village that is actually floating. So you'll see stilted houses where the water rises up, and so they're permanently above the water. And when we get out further, you'll see an actual floating village where they're almost nomadic. They'll move the entire village as they need to as the water changes.
So cute. Make a big man. A mechanic? <laughs> the boats. Make a big man also. Yeah, that how killer. Very complicated. <laughs> big house. That's very big. Yeah, very big. I guess more than one family? More than one family. Uh, that's a couple houses. Yeah, they just have fun on the hammock. 
anchoring their house. Oh, school. School, right there. Aww. Well, maybe they could take the super Get on the boat or you just swim? When the water is getting drier, then the people by the bank, they will move here also. Uh -huh. So more people. find their spot and they park it and if their neighbor's really annoying they just move. I'm gonna go live there to get all their plants. It's so cute. If the water was very very clean and no alligators or anything scary then I would want to live there. There's alligators? I don't know. Are there alligators in the lake? Of course. Lots. Yeah. Yeah. Solar panel. Solar panel. Oh, oh yeah. Smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a few so dishes uh, back at the store. I don't think they have I bought a coffee. Uh, yeah. What about import fees on the drop fee? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Garden going. Don't garden. It's so cool. There's no excuse saying you can't have a garden. Yes. Right. Hi, hi. Hey. Hi. 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 these guys coming up right here on the right so they're taking these reeds we saw a boat full of them at one point and they're planting them and then they wrap um there's some more and then they wrap the net around and they catch the fish fish farm This is the center, basically, of the village during dry season. During high season, this is mostly underwater. So the water covers this. Covers like two, two meter pots. So what? So they just empty everything before? It's awesome. Today. Oh wow, yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> Bridge. The fish on there? The cockles? What? Wow. Only use for scooters. Scooters. Yes. Yeah. 
Wow. Akun. <laughs> it's the rice smoking sticky rice. We put the rice in the rice now and then they put it off the bed. And corn. <laughs> We're gonna eat some. Yummy. I'll show you what it looks like. Alright. This is hay. You gotta pull this out first. Okay. You see the banana leaf? Yeah, yeah. Alright. That's it, huh? Yep. Just a bamboo. I do a little bit like a banana. Oh, it's uh, fresh. Very mm -hmm. sticky. Very good. And then it's yummy. And you eat it. <laughs> so, coconut milk, some sugar, a little bit of salt maybe, a sticky rice, and some black beans. Mung beans. Mung beans. And you're good to go. Put it on me. Lunch. <laughs> we just made it. To opening doors, Cambodia free. Join us next time on the Wallace Reboot as we head to a local school and get to do some volunteer work. Then we jump on a bus and head back to Bangkok where we were in for a surprise. Well, a few. Maybe I'll include some Instagram stories.